Well, happy Tuesday, happy garbage day. I love this garbage truck. Uh, great day to remember how our Lord takes away our sins and the trash and garbage out of our lives. And uh, today my reading is gonna be the uh, epistle from this last Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. So I'll say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. There is never a better statement to say because that reminds us of the hope, the confidence, and the forgiveness that we have in Christ. Now, our, our epistle this last Sunday was from 1 John chapters 1 and the first two verses of chapter 2. And I'll get to that, but I want to share a story that's going to kind of lead into it, the devotion for today. This is actually written by Chad Bird, uh, someone who uh, was a, a seminary prophet in Cordia, Fort Wayne. And uh, now he's uh, doing a secular job of truck driving, but he's also been turned into a speaker and author. And I thought this was a great lead into our reading. And it's entitled, The Husband who was 95% faithful to his wife. It goes, so how'd it go? The wife asked her husband when he returned from a weekend away with his friends. Did you guys have fun? He replied, oh yeah, we did. Had a blast. Great, said his wife. You needed that break. Yes, I did, he replied. Then he added, by the way, you should be proud of me. I was 95% faithful to you while I was gone. Now 95%. May be an excellent score on a chemistry exam, or if you hit a target of 95% of the time in a shooting range, you've got great aim. But that husband who, go, who was 95% faithful to his wife, needless to say, he failed in a huge way. In a marriage, anything less than 100% fidelity is infidelity. As it is with the, blood, with the bond between husband and wife, so it is between Yahweh and his bride Israel. And so it is between us and Christ. If Israel faithfully worshiped the Lord 364 days a year, but once a year had a festival in Jerusalem to Baal and Asherah, God would not have said, oh, I'm proud of you, my people, except for that one day annually where you are faithful to me. Why? Because as we read in Exodus, you shall worship no other God for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Now, this is a really neat uh, scenario because I read this to my wife last night. She's like, yeah, that seems kind of strange. You would never say I'm 95% faithful. And God's people in the Old Testament often would say, well, you know, we've, we've kept God's laws pretty well. And so we think we're, we're good enough. We merited it up right. Um, you would never say in a marriage if you came home and told your spouse I was 95% faithful to you. They'd be like, so you were 5% completely unfaithful. Well, that's the way God looks at us when we live our lives and when we sin, the fact is, is that we could say, well, God, I, I did good, like, you know, 95% of the time, 90, I, I got an 80, that's, that's passing, that's good. The Lord would say, but you were totally sinful, the other 20% or the other 10% or the other 5%. How Chad then ends this is that he says, strive to be faithful, yes. Pray for fidelity to our king. And when you fail, and you will fail, at all the time, then repent, confess, and cast yourself upon his mercy, for he is jealous. So he is also merciful. In fact, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. He is faithful to hear our confession, faithful to forgive, faithful always to bear us up in our weakness and lift us up when we fall. If you ever wonder just how faithful Jesus is, look at the scars in his hands, feet, and side. Those are his wedding ring emblazoned upon every the very flesh as the living pledge of his undying commitment to you. Now, I share that as my opening for the devotion today uh, to keep in mind when we're talking about being faithful to God, we're talking about uh, sinning to God, that we should take ourselves honestly, realize God wants honesty. He wants a broken and contrite heart. Not a lot of excuses. Well, I was 95%. I did my best. Isn't that good enough? If I do enough, then God will, well, he'll see how hard I tried and he'll reward me. No, that story illustration reminds us that we, even when we're doing the 95%, we're still being completely unfaithful, unfaithful to a spouse, unfaithful to our God. And so the, the scripture lesson I wanna share with you is from 1 John chapter one and the first verses of chapter two, which says this, that which we heard from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us, that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so you may have fellowship with us. 
And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the, the whole world. Now, that's where I shared that passage there. When we come to God, we don't go and say, I've done 95, I'm doing pretty good, I'm doing better than the guy next to me. No, we come forward and say, Lord, I have not been faithful to you. Lord, I have sinned. I have sinned in my thoughts, word, and deed, and I can claim that I've done my best, but the fact is, I'm a sinner. And Lord, if I claim that I haven't, that I'm done 95, I'm doing really good, then I make you out to be a liar. No, so what do I do? Do I just find myself rotting and saying, oh, I'm just a horrible, despicable person. I, I'm unfaithful to God, and my, in, my fidelity towards him is just washed away, and so I'm the most unfaithful person around? No, because what I do then is I cling to my advocate the one who is the propitiation for my sins. Now that word propitiation is one, as we talked about these last two weeks uh, amongst our Bible studies and our electors, is a really weird word. We don't use it very often. The word means paid in full, but not just paid in full for your past debt, paid in full for all debt. So it'd be an analogy of saying, you know, uh, someone came to church and said, I have this medical debt of $10,000. And I said, oh, well, the church will pay that $10,000 for you. Now that's paying off someone's debt, right? However, what if the church said, well, I'll pay your $10,000 debt and whatever other debt you accumulate in the future, I got that too. Now that's something that's unheard of because we'd be afraid people just rack up the debt or that we would never be able to cover that promise or that cost. But the fact is God did cover that cost. He covered the cost with the flesh and blood of his son that was shed, that was pierced, that was nailed at Calvary. And because of that, all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness, even if it's 95% faithful and 5% completely unfaithful, is completely atoned for, completely paid in full. So when we come to the Lord, we come with a broken, contrite heart. We come confessing our sins. We come honest. We come saying, yeah, Lord, I've been 95%. I've been doing good, but that means I'm still a total sinner to you. I'm still a total sinner in my life. So the best thing, the only thing I can do, the only thing I can do is cling to Jesus Christ for he is the propitiation for my sins, but not just for mine, for the sins of the entire world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Well, that was the devotion I wanted to share with you this morning. It ties in a little bit to the last one. If you uh, haven't followed Chad Bird, he's a, I, I really enjoy and appreciate the depth of his writings of law and gospel. And so if you follow me on my page or if uh, you like me on my page or whatever, that, or friends, I'm not sure how it works. I'm not the best at this technology stuff. Um, you'll probably see I share a lot of his things because for me, they really resonate as you can hear today. So remember, as we, as we live each day, we strive to do our best, but at the same time, we realize that we will always, always be unfaithful to God. And therefore, we have to always cling, cling to our Savior, Jesus, the one who is propitiation, the one who is our advocate, the one who is the righteous, the only one who is righteous. And through him, and only through him, we become righteous to God. For our prayers today, I'm going to have a couple of um, selfish prayers. Uh, I, I got to say in our own family, we've had a lot of things going on around here as we normally do. I mean, Lent and Easter, and then this last week was very, very busy. But um, we, we learned back in December that we have a, our dog is diabetic, which has been really fun with uh, insulin shots and, and uh, a new diet, which makes her extremely hungry, like all the time. But today she'll be going to have a surgery. She'll be getting spayed, which is kind of a, a common, normal, regular surgery. However, uh, being diabetic makes it a little more complicated. And not only that, but today we also are having our Winkle. All the pastors from our circuit, uh, for the very first time, are gonna be gathering together in person, which should be really awesome. 
It'll be in person though, uh, in, 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 at, here at Galilee. And so praying for safety and for them driving here for our meeting and just the joy of being able to encourage for in this time, we've had some changes in, in our pastors and our circuit and our circuit has also adapted a little bit. So we'll be welcoming some new pastors as well. So prayers for just our fellowship together with our fellow pastors who might be able to encourage one another. Prayers for the doctors, the vet who is gonna be working on my, uh, my dog today and uh, that everything would just go safe and secure. Uh, included that, definitely keeping our prayers. Vicki, who, uh, Vicki, is so good seeing you when I do see you. Uh, not just your name pop up on here, but also in person. Uh, Paul, who is doing uh, better and continues to go on a very positive road to recovery, although it's still a long one. Uh, we praise the Lord for that. And we praise the Lord for the gift of, uh, of the lives of Jean uh, Sanders and uh, how, in our lives and also Charlie Frick, two amazing Christian men who were laid to their eternal rest just last week. With all that, let's bow our heads and let's use the Lord's Prayer today. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, two other things I forgot. Keeping your prayers, our church council, which meets tonight, and also worship at home tomorrow night. It's our second one as we restart. Awesome time. We're in our second season. It's kind of weird to say that. So uh, join us in our second season as we have our second uh, worship at home tomorrow night at seven o'clock. And thank you, uh, Carver, for putting all of that together. Happy Garbage Day. Uh, recycle your sins with Jesus, who is our propitiation, who is our advocate, who makes us righteous. Have a ble very blessed day. I love you and aloha.